that was so wonderful. And I do know that when I was on sign code back then in that term, all the folks that were populated on sign code with me, the other business folks, it was kind of a good mixture. It was half neighborhood, half business. So we came up with some really good policy, right. um, that kind of stuff. So you had, the, you had the ear of government to say, let's make this better. When I sat on all these panels of fixed development services, they're all under those eras. And, 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 and to, be, and to be fair to guys like Fred, uh, the business community uh, didn't help out either. Okay. And why is that, Chris? Why does that continue to be an con- ongoing issue? This you know, I, I want to break this down in a All scientific right. manner and right. take a lot of time to okay. do it. The Tucson Chamber of Commerce smells and rots. Mm. Okay? How about that? Okay? They've been useless politically. Okay? They do their trite little endorsements. Okay? Uh, Camper and these guys coming out against Prop 200 the way they did and didn't support Steve or Sean or Ben. Ben's his former employee, for God's sakes. Okay? He didn't come out and help those guys out. You know something? That's just the, the tip of the iceberg on why they stink over there. And it's typical of what they do over well, there. Well, we go back to our chart. Lots of things have So if you're a Tucson of- Chamber member, right, and there, that dues comes around for $600, keep it in your pocket. It is not, and you know what happens? You know this, I know this. There's that culture that you should be in the Chamber of Commerce because that's the right thing to do when you're a business owner. Well, wait till this one gets fixed in the next five to ten years, if it ever happens. And, uh, well, there's three, there's three things a chamber should do and can do for a community. And number one is uh, networking and marketing, so you can get meet other business owners. Absolutely. Number two is uh, education, so you can take the QuickBooks class. You can take the things to understand how to become a better business person. And number three, and this is the one where most people join for, is political advocacy. Yep. Do they set the table in your community? Do they make Tucson a better place to open, grow, and run your business? They have, to be, the count- they have to be the counterweight to right. the, the environmentalists that go overboard right. okay, and the neighborhood associations. And – they're, they're, they're not, yeah. They just like being with the good old boys, back slapping. Hey, have another margarita. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that's that's just not cutting it after 33 years of that. So seven nine zero twenty forty is the number. Bill, you're on line two. What's up, buddy? Uh, good morning, guys. Um, listening to you talk about the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of things like the chamber and whatnot, I'm reminded of um, several years back um, when the Tucson Business Coalition yeah. those, those first. Um, it was, you know, it, it wasn't yeah. The exactly. TBC there was there was an uprising of small business guys that kind of came together. It was like a hundred and some strong, and they were at the same boat. They were like, "Look, we're we're getting just just turned our way and can't have our our issues talked about everywhere we look. So we're going to come together. We're gonna, they wore black armbands and they showed up at council meetings and they affected policy. And and again, it's it's the idea that the organizations that you'd think that are in place that would um, advocate for businesses don't do an effective job, and you get to a point where there's enough of a frustration level about, uh, amongst the businesses out there, they get sick and tired of uh, running into a brick wall with the, 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 the chamber and, and, and mm-hmm. group like that, mm-hmm. and they say, okay, we're going to start our own. So they, they call the talk shows mm-hmm. and they get people excited, and they get some changes implemented, but they're only on the surface. Right. And as the, the, that group of people begins to feel like, okay, I got some things done. I can go back and concentrate my efforts on my business again. They forget that if they don't make a sustained effort over time, the changes they actually want to have happen will never happen. Right. So starting because another starting another chamber, starting another circle, SALC, whatever those look like, aren't the answer is kind of the it, point you're making. It falls yeah. back to that, 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 well, we're just going to go along to get along. Right. Existing Chamber of Commerce, which that which goes along with people like Mayor Walkup as their poster children for who the elected officials should be, and we end up with this mishmash of nothing, where businesses are basically told no occupancy. You well, can't you know, come in here. Ed talks about this all the time, kind of the good old boy network, where things just the deck sh- deck chairs keep shuffling, the TUSD boards, the the chamber, all these boards, they just continue to be the same folks, and that's kind of why we're at where we're at. For years, 20, 30 years, yeah. yeah. And, just, you know, I, I understand that things are extremely tough and businesses have to focus their efforts on their own particular uh, uh, way of making, making a buck this week. But if they want to succeed over the long term, right. some effort every day needs to be focused on, okay, I don't get any satisfaction from the Chamber of Commerce when I call. I'm going to continue to... to Call and demand that they do things that uh, I want to see happen, but they all that that businessman also needs to take the time 
and find people, be it a Kazachik, be it a, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, whoever with the, the, the county or with the state, and support those people. Maybe you can't do it financially today, but you get out, you, you email your friends, you talk to people, and over a sustained period of time, you can get the changes that people actually want. But get, it is, it's got to be consistent, Bill. You're totally correct. It's got to be 12 months a year, 30 days a month. You got to be you got to be pushing the change yeah. every single day. Thanks, not not, not just well. when they kick you in the groin. You yeah, know what I mean? Thanks, thanks Billy. Call. My thing is with Mister Mister Camper and the good folks at the chamber. We got off our Bob thing. We'll get back to it next segment. I promise. Is he makes 200 G's a year, mm-hmm. somewhere in there? Yeah, somewhere in there. Let's say 150 to 200 G's. Right. Okay, still a good amount of dough. Gets his free cars, his Tucson Country Club membership as part of it. And as Spider-Man Peter Parker once said, or his Uncle Ben did, with great power comes great responsibility. And what happens is what are we seeing as the results of this, of this chamber? And you know something? It is bad networking events, trite chamber endorsements for candidates – uh, declining membership. Declining membership. A terrible business environment throughout it, the Just community. look at their, their, quote, people of the year. Development services problems. Okay. When you name Larry Hecker, who doesn't, he has a, a law practice, okay, who doesn't hire anybody in this town. And just because he's part of the good old boys network and sits on every board humanly possible, how do you justify that as your, quote, man of the year? Okay. That's pretty pathetic. That's a perfect example of how pathetic this chamber is. So why don't you get passionate? No one's passionate about what they talk about. We talk about it all the time. The right side of the chart, there are passionate people in these neighborhood associations. There are passionate people about the environment. Whether you disagree with them or not, they're into it. Right. Well, you know something? The Tucson Chamber is not passionate about anything except keeping their positions and their salaries. Okay, you know, Camper kind of yells once in a while, but I've never seen him passionate about anything about changing this community. And I hate to tell you, it's kind of part of the reason this the, the chart is so messed up right now. You know, yeah, the playing yeah. field is totally messed up. You are absolutely on fire today, man. I love it. You're fired up. I'm not on fire. Yes, you are. No. I love it. So, again, well, and it's deep rooted issues. I think that's a bill brought forward. Look, we're all busy as business people. We don't have time to go out there and show up at everything. But we we, we write a check and we'll throw it over to one group that we think is going to do that effort, and then we'll be plugged in when we need to be plugged well, in. By let's them. Talk, but let's talk. They're not doing that. Let's talk about my that. friends in the hotel business. Okay, at the in the Solara Southern yes. Arizona Lodging and Resort Association. Well, I hate to tell you, they kind of played ball with all these guys for years. Mm-hmm. They really did. Kissing butts, kissing the bureau's butt, all, the visitors bureau, who's our not so great we tourism today motion. Today not today. <laughs> okay. And what happened was they let the you know they they, they basically rubber stamp deals the city and the county on the bureau and other things. And these guys kind of go along because they're taking care of their business, right? Well, when the city finally raised the bed tax, which what we're learning is basically it was based on recommendations from the visitor bureau themselves to raise the bed tax only on the city hotels, which makes them uh, in a, a, a competitive disadvantage. All of a sudden. A couple of guys, probably Tom was the one who got them really. All of a sudden, Solara's up and at them. Okay, they're sending people to city council meetings. They're protesting. All this great stuff. 11th hour. Awesome. Yeah, right before okay. the 11th well, hour. Well, and it's great that they did that, but right. now they need they need to jump on it afterwards. I mean, they need to jump on it tomorrow. And it, it, lawsuits. And now they're going to now they're going to sue the city. Right. Well, after they sue the city, and the city pays a city with all this money is going to pay all this money to lawyer fees and whatever else they got to do as part of this. Okay, and they're going to lose. They're going to lose big time. The city on this one. Solara, the lodging associate, needs to keep kicking them in the butt for like the next two years right. again. Just keep it up. Just right. because this little issue is over doesn't mean it's over. Right. Because they'll get you another way. Right. So, 649 the old job, Pueblo. Uh, let's hold on to Roger real quick because we do got to go to break. We are way past on a hard break here. So, Roger, hold on. Roger called 790-2040. If you want to join the conversation. Um, it's a flamethrower. If, you're, if you're a member of the chamber <laughs> who thinks they actually do something, we love to talk to you. 790-2040 is the number. It's Chris and Joe on a quiet, peaceful Wake Up Tucson show. We'll see you in just a bit. Oh, that nice? Pretty paper. Trying to calm Pretty him down. Paper. Nice nice job. You'll need more than a song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take more than a song. Five, right. uh, 654 in the AM. We are uh, coming Joe, to Joe, we're going to test your musical knowledge. Who's singing that? Absolutely no clue. Roy Orbison. Great one, yeah. Oh. Big